Chris and Newley, we'd love to hear from your attorneys. Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. My name is Matt Gleason and I'm your host for an hour live streaming web, archived on YouTube, content rich, heavy laden. Is there any more adjectives for this show? Redolent. Redolent? Ooh. You got me on that one. I'm Matt Gleason, your host. This is, uh, which I already told you, but you might have already forgot. However, I haven't told you this yet, but you've already read it. This is my co-host, Lisa Derrick. Lisa, welcome. Hey, Matt. Are we, are we, what is this, show number 15? Jeez. This is our quinceanera. Ooh. All right. Woo-hoo. I'm sorry I didn't wear a dress, but we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Six, well, sweet sweet 16 is next Sunday. You can't wear your high heels on this. I can't screen. wear the high heels on the green screen. So um, we broadcast live every Sunday, streaming at dronebox.com. We're archived on YouTube. Dot com. You ever hear of it? It's a website that has streaming video. It's owned by Google. That's a website, too. Anyway, uh, so hey, what's in the news? Well, it turns out, Matt, Uh-oh. <clears throat> that 2015, the year... Last we, year. Last year, the reports are just in. It is, was the worst year ever for art censorship. Art censorship where? Well, China led it. China is censorship. China is censorship. They How do you say a, Chinese... In, in Chinese, you say the word China by saying censorship. Oh, it's a homophone. I blew that it's joke It's a totally. homophone? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any homophones in China. Okay. They do, actually, but we'll go into homo... Homophone... <laughs> Never mind. Why me? Homophonia? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so so, so what U- about this? In the U.S., there was censorship? There was. No. There were eight incidents, the most notable being, and this has me so... You know Modigliani's nude reclining? It set auction records. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big, big sale last year, right. yeah. How do you censor a Modigliani? You put little pixelated things over the nude parts because it was too racy for over mainstream. a Modigliani. Yeah, it was okay, too well, racy, so it went. They went pointillism on Modigliani. They went point. <laughs> they went pointillist on a fovist. Uh, terrible, terrible, terrible things yeah. happen. So um, wow, that's just pretty pathetic because um, you know at at some point even Facebook understands that that um, artistic nudes. I bet I bet you know artistic nudes. You know, they kind of give you a, like a bit of a leeway. No, you know, Stacy Landy's nude of me was pulled by Facebook, and they blocked her for three days. We had to start a. I had to write to Facebook and go, "That's me. That's art." I just want you to know, Lisa, if there's a nude of you <laughs> on Modern Art Blitz, it won't be censored by Dronebox.com. <laughs> the Dronebox Studios are pro, pro any nude modeling you'd care to do. So. <laughs> So, um, hey, so this happens to be an episode with two guests, as we, we usually That's have two guests. That's not that unusual. Um, um, but we, we got a good show today. Uh, later on today is going to be uh, uh, the legend uh, of downtown L.A. and parts unknown Richard Ankrum. But uh, before that, tell us about our first guest. Our first guest has shown at Coagula Curatorial. Where the f- Oh, yes, uh, that happens to be my gallery. Yeah, she was and in a, a two-person show, a great two-person great show. Great two-person yes. show. But she, Rochelle Botello has many other locations where she's shown. She's shown in Berlin. Berlin. She's showed in South Korea. Ooh. And I know, talk about, that should, that's Can you imagine be... swimming all that way with your artwork? I just, <laughs> ooh, man, okay. But she's also shown at the... Holter Museum of Art in Helena, Montana, with a solo show. Wow. She was at, in the Torrance Art Museum. Wow. And most recently at Launch Gallery. Launch Gallery on La Brea, great yes. gallery. So, and, well, and hey. I love her colorful use 
of sculpture. She uses felt and cardboard and vibrant paint, not yeah. unlike our green screen, which we can't see because you've there's got the checkerboard. Lot, there's a lot going on in the work of Rochelle Botello. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Rochelle, Rochelle Botello. Botello. Hey, wow, you walk on and there's there's <laughs> one of your artwork. Now, now let me just to clear it up, is it Botello or Botello? Botello. Botello. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the origin of Botello? Uh, it's Italian. Italian. It's Italian. Wow. Mm -hmm. And are you first generation Italian? Um, I believe I'm fourth or fifth generation. Yeah. Um, actually, my um, my stepdad raised me, so it's Botello, but my um, biological last name is actually Padilla. Ah. So where where were you raised? I was raised in uh, Central California, Salinas. I went to school at UC Santa Cruz. Wow. Yep. Now, you know, you know, um, somewhere near Salinas, I let it slip away. Oh, that's the terrible <laughs> line from, from, from Bobby McGee. Okay, so, uh, so hey, well, let's look at an artwork. You look to the left there. What, what, what are we looking at? Uh, and tell us about this artwork. This is an artwork that I did um, for the show at launch. Um, they are wall um, constructions made out of um, cardboard, paper, um, mostly um, cardboard and paper. And, um, yeah, that's it. And how big is that piece? That piece is about um, this size. Here. It's about three by three? Yeah. And so, uh, so you're definitely working, and, and I know your work to be kind of abstract. Do you, mm -hmm. you end up with some kind of um, fun elements, shall we call them, uh, in your work? I mean, what, there, there, there is the occasional stretch of whimsy amidst the abstraction, yeah? Playful. Uh, yeah, it depends. I mean, I think when initially when I start um, a sculpture, I'm not, especially for these more abstract pieces, I'm thinking, um, I'm allowing the work to sort of speak, speak to me as I work with it so that um, I already have a palette. So for this piece, I knew there were going to be some blues and whites and some pinks. But in terms of the form, I really um, allow the piece to sort of evolve. I'm working with um, cardboard. I'm ripping it up. I'm um, then putting masking tape and then building the structure as I go. Cool, cool. And then wow. I over, and then masking tape and then um, paper. Now, well, I, I I recognize that checkerboard floor anywhere. That happens to be at uh, in Chinatown at my gallery. Now, mm -hmm. now this was your uh, sculptural installation. You were part of a two-person show. Marion Lane was on the um, was on the wall. Right. And and you were uh, on the floor, so to speak, but a little up from the floor here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this piece, um, uh, it was a little bit, um, it's more of an open-ended narrative. This was, um, and again, it starts out, if you see that bottom piece down below, this sort of stump. Yeah. Um, so I started out with this piece with no idea really of how it was going to evolve. And so I had this color palette and I thought, all right, well, what happens next? Um, and being open to that process. So I initially just had this um, organic um, abstract form and thinking about this, well, what what is it next? What is it on? So then I build a larger structure um, and then building from there. Mm -hmm. So again, thinking about, well, what is it on? Is it a figure? What does the figure look like? What is the figure wearing? Um, and I, my entire, for this piece, um, I worked on for several months thinking about how this narrative was going to unravel. And, 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 is, and, and is there a defined narrative here? Is it pretty ambiguous? It's, it's ambiguous. I think I have these very uh, loose themes that I wanted, wanted to address. I was thinking a lot about mortality, immortality, connections that we have with nature, um, and this interconnectedness, interconnectedness that we have. And I think just not over-intellectualizing it, but allowing these themes to get played out in the work. Cool. Would you call yourself a feminist artist? Um, in, uh, yes, I, I'm definitely a, fe a feminist in general, and mm -hmm. I think that art is political. So in the very fact that I'm making art today, I think is an act of um, activism. Um, this is not to suggest that I, I'm a feminist artist. I'm not sure if my work, um, the, the motivation is to be um, political per se or feminist mm -hmm. per se. Um, but I definitely align myself along with some of those beliefs of civil rights, equal rights, those kinds of things for sure. Wow. And so how long have you been, um, I want to say sculpting, but I mean, did sculpture, were you always a sculptor? Did you start off, you know, when did you start really, you know, making art? Um, well, when I was very young, I loved to draw and I loved to doodle. I had a very active imagination. Um, so I actually started out just drawing and doodling. And then in the um, or, or late 90s, um, I took a trip to Europe and I wanted to study art um, seriously. And so... Um, 
I was exposed to a lot of art um, in London, and I saw these objects, and I thought I want to investigate that further in my own practice. And what I, year was this? Mid nineties. Wow. And mid nineties, but prior to that, I am um, I have my my BA in sociology and emphasis in social psychology. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my history or career path was actually in social work, working with a lot of uh, women's organizations and counseling. So it was a big um, step to, to then at that time decide I really want to be um, involved um, as an artist. Well, and, and what are we looking at now? Ah, this is called um, Corpse Flower, and this is a sculpture I did um, um, a couple of years ago for actually for the Coagula show. Oh, um... The two-person show with... Yeah, that was mm -hmm. three years ago, was it? Maybe three, three years, years ago. Three years ago, two years ago. Jeez, time, time. <laughs> time flies. I can't, yeah. I can't explain it any clearer. And again, I mean, people ask me all the time, like, well, did you, do you work with sketches? Do you have a, uh, you know, a plan in terms of how this is going to evolve? And I really didn't. I actually started, um, you know, I assemble it. I initially started with the top. And, you know, it, I guess it's the way that my brain is wired. People say, why don't you start out with the bottom? It's sort of, you know, and it isn't how it happens. So I allow the piece to sort of... Um, you work your way down. <laughs> with this piece, which makes no sense. Kind of like the economy, right? <laughs> and then, and do yeah. the, as you're building it, do the colors come to you as to what's going to be what? Or do you just sort of go with a color palette and put it where you, where intuitively and instinctively? Yes, I think for this piece, I loved that um, it was almost over the top, these hot pinks. Mm -hmm. um, I use a lot of, for this piece, I used um, pink duct tape and paper and cardboard and paper. Um, so there's no paint in it. It really oh. is, they're cut in tiny pieces and then I glue and paste, glue and paste. So they're almost like sculptural collages in a way mm -hmm. because it's, I mean, in terms of how I'm making them and they're really small. And because the materials are malleable, I'm able to make those decisions very quickly so that if I'm making a form, I don't like it, tear it off and do it again. Right. So I love that way of working. Um, it's an immediate, um, hands-on approach. And I guess for me, it's, it's sustained me in terms of how I like to work. Well, and, and now, how, how large is this piece? Now, that piece is probably uh, about this big. Is that mounted on a wall? It is. And this was a... Oh, wait, here. Do that how, how big it is now. <laughs> like this. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Sorry. And it's mounted um, on a wall? It is mounted on a wall, and is, um, this piece is called um, Cry Baby, and it was a part of a series of wall works that I did for the launch um, exhibition. Uh, I believe that was last year. February of last February. year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and Marion Lane curated that show. Yes. So, so did you like working with launch? I did. Now, did, and, you, um, did you like working with Launch better than you liked working with Coagula Curatorial? <laughs> oh, loaded. <laughs> I know, wow. Well, um, I'll say, um, <laughs> I won't answer that. But Sorry, James. <laughs> I, I know. Um, but it was really wonderful because, um, and, and again, I've, I'm an installation artist, and I, and I like the idea of setting up uh, challenges. I knew I was going to be in a smaller um, venue, a smaller room, a more intimate space. And because I had just come from making these huge, life-size sculptures, I thought, well, all right, how, how can I maintain, can I maintain this vitality, this sort of movement in the works, you know, up against the wall? How can they, you know, um, how can, how will that play out and will the viewer still, you know, feel inclined to walk around or see the side of it? So again, that was really important. Mm -hmm. Very important. important. For me. I, mm -hmm. I, I get that. And I think that's the kind of the dilemma of the sculptor is how to engage, you know, the third dimension. Even when you're working off the wall, you've got so much dimension here that, I mean, you don't consider that to be a painting, do you? No. No. I really don't. It's I mean, a wall sculpture, yes. yeah? Yes. Because there's a, there's a dilemma in formalism. And, now, do you consider yourself a formalist? I mean, is there content here outside of, of um, line, shape, color, form, beauty, sensuousness? You know, I think um, a lot. Um, I'm, I'm very open to what's going on in my life around me. I'm not sure how it plays out subconsciously in my work. So I know a lot of the work, um, the meaning comes after the making. So it's not as though I'm specifically thinking, now I'm going to do this or do that. I, for these wall structures, I, I, I not only had a palette, I just I wanted to disrupt these colors and these forms. Uh, I mean, for me, it, <laughs> it was this interplay, this um, um, inner connection, again, about relationships between patterns and color. And, and so, so do you consider that to be, I mean, I mean there's an inher inherently in making art these days is somehow kind of political, don't you think? Yeah, and I think there's um, definitely a place um, 
for that in the art world. That's not really, that doesn't really interest me per se. Um, Do you, I mean, just, I'm, I'm thinking about art just in the context of a larger culture. Mm -hmm. You know, just to be an artist today is somewhat of a statement, don't you think? No, absolutely. Um, but I think my work um, might still align itself in a more formal. Yeah. yeah. Now, where, where did you uh, study art? I studied art at Claremont Graduate University. Yeah. When I went, well, I didn't go there, but I taught there and it was mm -hmm. Claremont Graduate School. When did it mm -hmm. become a university? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I know when After I, they got rid of me. <laughs> when, when I went there, it was CGU, so. CGU. Mm -hmm. So when, when, what, what, when did you go to CGU? I graduated in 2004. Wow. Okay, so you're, you're a veteran now. Mm -hmm. You're a veteran of the art wars, so to speak. <laughs> have you, have mm -hmm. you, um, you've survived this long. I mean, you've shown at galleries that have probably mm -hmm. come and gone. I mean, what are, what, what are, what are the lessons that you've learned just in the trenches as far as, uh, you know, staying committed to your, I want to say craft without calling your work crafty, mm -hmm. but you know, a commitment to what you do. Well, I think it's, um, I think you've hit it on the head with um, commitment. I feel it, I feel that it is a compulsion for me. I mean, a lot of my students will, you know, ask me, you know, what sustains me, and it is that. It is um, this purpose, it gives me joy, and I feel like um, I, I have something to say, and I just, I just will keep doing it until I and no, no longer feel compelled to do it. And, and where do you teach? I teach at um, Art Center. I teach at, um, let's see, Citrus College, Ryman Arts, and I'm also a workshop coordinator at Artworks LA. At what? Artworks LA. What's that? It's a um, arts organization that helps students um, um, stay in school. I oh. work at Continuation High Schools. Oh, okay, Arts. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, do you do you think that the the role of educator? I mean, does that inform your work at all? Does it inform my work? Um, I mean, have you ever I, learned, have you ever, basically, have, have you ever seen a kid do something cool and say, mm, I think I'm gonna try that around the studio tomorrow? <laughs> no, no? Uh, not in that way, but I think a lot of, um, whether we're aware of, aware of it or not, I do feel experiences inform, in, well, for me anyway, inform my work. Whether it's some, whether somebody says something or I hear a conversation or I'm having an inter, in, you know, exchange between a student or they're telling me about their life story, uh, I think I think we can't help, but for me, it's sort of absorbed, you know. And so for me, when I'm making pieces, um, they, I think they do somehow play out in the work. Um, I do remember one incident where I had a student was showing me a, a picture of a um, flying squirrel, and I thought that it was photoshopped. And I said, "Well, that's not real." And he said, "Yes, it's real. A, a flying squirrel is real." And I said, "No, it's, it's not." not. Just yeah, no, just... no, it was like five or six years ago. And I said, "No, it can't be." And he's like, "What, well, Rochelle? Of course it's real." I said, "A flying squirrel. Like it's it's got wings and you it flies." You had never heard of a flying no. squirrel. No. Wow. And and, I, and he said, "Look it up." And he was like, he was laughing at me. And I said, "Look." He sh and I, I googled it the next day. And I was like fascinated. I was so in love with these flying squirrels that I <laughs> then made a actually for the No Joke show at Coagula. I made this huge huge figure oh, yeah. sitting on the flying squirrel oh, because God, again I could not get it out of my head yeah. that I was so enamored with this like thing and you know that exists in the world and I didn't, had no idea that it was so sometimes these exchanges will happen while I find like hmm okay and so, it'll find its way in the work tell us tell this looks two-dimensional am, am I wrong this is um actually a, a detailed shot of um, a sculpture called a mouthful of horses Oh, wow. Is there a larger picture? There should be. Maybe Here, the next let's, one. Let's see if the next one is. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, great, great. That's beautiful. And where, where is Thank this? You. This was at that. This was actually at that. That's a, I see the checkerboard floor. Yes. yes. It's unmistakable. And so, um, and, and give, us, give us another estimate just for the audience. I mean, this, this is, is about probably, anthropomorphic size. Yeah, this is about six feet tall six feet and tall. F five feet wide, yeah. something like that. And, and uh, what year is this? That was a couple of years ago. Yeah. In the same, so I want to say two, three years ago, maybe? Tw no, it was like 2013. God, 14. that is almost... 13, 14. 13, 14? Because you opened in 14. Well, 14? You, you no, opened in late 13. Th late 13, but late th the show was in 14. In 14? In okay. 14, yeah. I don't remember. I, I, what did I have for breakfast today? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> protein <laughs> you know, drink. Protein, pro probably a protein <laughs> drink. So, um, so, so um, and, and, and is this based, this is not based on a flying squirrel though. This is not. This was, um, and again, like I mentioned before, this, I love this idea of the forms having an organic influence, um, like again of nature, but not nature specific. So I would say maybe fauna or flora. With this particular piece was, 
I was thinking about that to some degree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not there's no specificity in the work, but for me, when I, if I think about it after, I'm like, oh, this kind of reminds me of. It's interesting that you mentioned nature because your colors tend to have a synthetic sensibility, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so and yet and you you find that you're 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 still inspired by you know natural colors, but there's kind of these fluorescent you know there's pinks, this one is greens and blues, and yet you're still saying there's a natural. Whereas a lot of people would see a, a disconnect there, don't you think? I I think for me because the color is so saturated, um, there's a vitality to the work. So for me, that's what it was sort of. Um, it resonated with me. The colors are so over the top that when I see life growing or, or like a new blade of grass, it's almost so um, overly sensory. The only, way to, the only way to express that is through yeah, this, this, for, this intense synthetic color. Yes. Wow. I think for me. And woo, what are we here in? We're kind of floating wow. in this one. Is this, a, this, is this 2D? <laughs> no, this is actually a detailed shot of a, an installation sculptural piece called Let It Fall. OK, let's, let's see if that's is that the next. Is that Let It Fall? No. No? Where'd we let's go? Let's see. Well, that's the close-up of Let It, it Fall. It's a close-up. Is that a pig fish. eating a shoe? It is. Um, it could be a pig. It could. It's an animal-esque dog, donkey. Okay, um, Ooh, we're stepping on its head there. <laughs> what, what, here, oh, well, now it's going to eat you. Yikes. Okay. Um, and what? And what is this? And again, this was a, um, a sculpture that I did for um, the launch show. And okay. that's called Let It Burn. Let It Burn? Let It Burn. What is, is the, the inspiration for a piece like Let It Burn? Sounds very um, political. <laughs> is it about Los Angeles? No. Um, Let It Burn, I think, again, um, not that it's for public, but I think when I was making it, I was, I was kind of struggling with the piece a little bit. And oh. so it's this idea for me of building and tearing apart, rebuilding. And for this piece, I, it had many transformations until it ended up, it had different colors. It was completely, and I remember thinking I was so almost done with the piece. And so I think it was, that's how it came about, just mm -hmm. the title. And so, uh, and what, what, what do you, uh, where's your studio these days? My studio, I work from home. Where's home? I live in Long Beach. Yeah? Do you mm -hmm. like Long, you know, a lot I of do. artists live in Long Beach. Man. I do, I think it's economic. Um, I can afford to live what there, but. What is up but with Long Beach? I, it's fantastic, I wish it was closer to LA. Here, here's my issue with Long Beach. What? I go to parties in Long Beach, or go visit friends in Long Beach. There is nowhere to park in Long Beach. <laughs> there is nowhere to park. You, you drive I know, and I know. every street is like, lane, lane, parked cars, parked cars, parked cars, driveway, parked cars, parked, oh, there's a, a fire hydrant. What is up? What is up with Long Beach? I know. Beach? I, I don't know about the parking, but... Um, I'm just trying to have that really yeah, LA yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying I to make New York remember that Modern Art Blitz is from the West Coast. <laughs> we got our own set of problems here, and Frost ain't one of them. Well, there's an upcoming art fair in Long Beach, too, in June. There's an art fair in Long Beach? Yeah, it's going to be aboard the Queen Mary. It's called Art Gathering. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so when you are in Long Beach, mm -hmm. does any anything be in that close? Are you close to the beach? Or does this inform your work? You feel um, the climate, sense of space, sense of place. I think probably what informs the work is because I work at home. It's in my everyday life, and I feel that art making is not separate from our lives. So for me, if I'm waking up with the work, it's immediate. I'm able to, you know, if I need to sleep or eat, I'm with my dogs. I'm with the work. I don't feel a separation. So yeah. in that regard, yes. How many dogs do you have? I have two dogs. Two dogs? Yes, they're very small and... You didn't bring them. I know, I, should, I didn't think I would have. I would have loved to have them. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll have to ask, Nolan, can we have dogs on the show? Are, are pets allowed? Case by case. Ca on a case by case basis. <laughs> you have to meet the dogs first. No, okay. they're super tiny. They're tiny. Very sweet. I love they're my tiny sweet. dogs. They're sweet. I have a dog who's not tiny nor sweet, so uh, <laughs> yeah. I already he's know allowed. he's not allowed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and oh, is that, where are we here now oh, again? you know, is this... this is um, Let It Fall, and this is from a different angle. Oh, okay. Right. So on the other side was that um, dog-esque form that we just looked at. Yeah. But on this side is the figure. Okay. That's a female figure, and she's like on a desk or a how table. Do we know, how do we know it's female? I, I, I didn't make it gender specific. No. To you're me, just, it's, I'm you're, 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 uh, you're running away with it. Yeah, I know. Okay, that's, that's, that's the viewer's prerogative in your work, or do you want people to know no. specifics? I really don't, and I think even with making this figure, much like the narrative, I thought it really doesn't matter. Like, there's just enough information where it's a figure. The face is full of, the face is covered with fur, faux fur, and so is this, like, it could be anyone, the sense of un anonymity. Um, there's no other signifiers to suggest otherwise. The figure looks small. 
Um, but I think sometimes it's just enough. It's like maybe a, a being of sorts. It doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl. Okay, cool. But if somebody, if, I mean, th th that didn't freak you out no. when she said it was No, and I think the reality is that you can't really control your work once it's out there. It freaked me out. But that's a great lesson that Rochelle Botello just gave mm -hmm. us. And that is, you artists cannot control the context. Don't let the grad school think that you can control the context. You can in the studio visit with your grad school professor before you, or before you choose to or choose not to have an affair with him. But... <laughs> You, can, <laughs> you cannot control the context once you let your art out to a wider audience. There, we've had a, we've had a very valuable uh, lesson here. So, um, well, Rochelle, thank you so much. Thank you. For being a guest. Obviously, I've, I've shown your art. I love your art. I think you're great. And, and I know that you have a, a bright future ahead of you. Your, your stardom is only becoming, it's only nascent now as on, a, on an upswing. Is, is that how you feel? I feel really good. Um, I'm in a sculpture show coming up at the Sam Maloof Foundation. Oh, wow. um, and it's a huge nice. uh, group show. Wow. It's all outdoors. It's going to be pretty, pretty great. And in the summer, I'm in a three-person show with Julia Schwartz and David Lloyd over at Eastside International. Oh, wow. Those are, these are all big yeah. names. Wow, 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 wow. Big yeah. names, big names. Super so, exciting. okay, great, great. Well, Thank you're on the ascent, and we're happy to have had you on Modern Art Blitz. Great. Thanks for being Thank on the you. show. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now you have to give Rick Ankrum your microphone. <laughs> So, all right, wow. Wow. Wow, well that was, man, this is great stuff. I know, I know. So, I, I don't know what to, Out I don't know, uh, yeah. I don't know how to top that, but I'm gonna, we're gonna have to try with our next guest, but they're, they're oh boy, oh wait a little. Oh boy, get in there. You can put it in your pants, baby. <laughs> okay, we're talking about his microphone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of things being put in pants. Uh-oh, let's hear it. Well, we were, we were talking about censorship in Facebook oh, earlier. Yeah? And you know that Facebook censored a beautiful piece of original art. It was a pastel drawing by a woman named Ilma Gore of Donald Trump. But she showed him with a micro penis, a very, oh. very teeny weeny. Well, that's funny because I mean, I mean, I can understand. I mean, basically, that sounds like they're sympathetic to. It to sounds Trump. like that Facebook is sympathetic to Donald Trump and not wanting to offend him. Well, maybe they just didn't want to show a really ugly baby penis. An ugly baby penis. Well, I want to say, speaking of ugly baby penises, no, but, but, yeah. hey, we have to introduce you. Come Jay, on, come Jay, on, I have to introduce the amazing, Here's your, here's your introduction. Okay. Tell Richard, us about him. Richard Tell us about our next guest. Well, do a he's puppet. best known. He's best known. For his, the five freeway artwork. Which oh, we're going okay. To, so his, his, one of his biggest exhibitions was on the 110 freeway. All right. It's Richard Ancrum. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Ancrum. Now. now you can come in. Now. Hey. Sugar daddy. No. I don't think I've ever seen you without your glass. Here, I'll yeah, get to say here. For you, I know. for you, I will take Thank off you. my glass. Thank you. Here. Do for that, you, please. I'll put on mine. Here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. How you doing, man? Good. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, man. So, um, man, you've been showing art in, well, you've been showing art in Southern California for how long? Gee, uh, I would say I moved to downtown LA in 92. Wow, where were you so before I that? I started, I was in Orange County. You were in Orange County? Yeah. Is that where you're from? No. Where are you from? Seattle. I was born in Seattle. I'm from Enumclaw, Washington. Enumclaw. And you're not the Green River Killer, correct? No, but he was, <laughs> he was alive and well when I left. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, he was killing people uh, all Yikes. over the place. Okay, well, you know, to see, what, to see the art we're showing here, I think I actually have to put my fucking glasses back on. That's good. Okay, so, uh, so what are we looking at here? Oh, well, we're jumping around. This is the... Uh, uh, this is, I'm just here. Well, it, yeah, we're well, okay. we're, we're just jumping previous. around. Well, let's oh, see. Pick, yeah. pick one and we'll oh talk about it. Oh my gosh, I loved these. You showed those at the Charlie James Gallery. Yeah. We're at the yeah. Charlie James Gallery. They're figurines gifted. And thanks for coming to the show. I didn't get to say hi, but I recognize you Oh my God, you that was one of my favorite shows this last so, year. So, so what, what exactly um, inspired you to take classic Americana figurines and, and give them a s and M context, you sick bastard. I have to blame Susie, my girlfriend, because she her house is full of figurines and I was looking at them one day I and I thought, you know, oh, if I had had the bed, I, you know I, what I really want to do with this thing. I know, is, I didn't think it was going to be figurines. If I had had the bed, I would have bet that her house was full of S and M gear. Well, no, so apparently, no, it was figurines. Yeah, so okay. I decided to, uh, I just acted on a. Import, or whim. I thought, oh, you know what I really want to do with that thing is dip its head. So dip its I head. did. Okay. And so, so they're dipped in latex? Yeah, synthetic rubber. 
Okay, and, and then, then you, you carved it away? No, I just dip it three times, two to three times, sometimes four or five. And then, and then you add the zipper and stuff? And I add the zipper later with dental tools. It's easy to trim and cut. Wow. And I also add grommets around the eyes to give it the right look. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, ah. well, that's, that, that, now what year is the, uh, this work is, when did you start doing these? And in 2000, uh, at the very end of 2011, I, yeah. and uh, good old iPhone, Oh. Charlie comes up and he says, what are you doing now? And I show him on the phone and, and that he was said, it. yeah, he said, bring it into the gallery. Wow. They were genius. Like that. Just so I said, give me, photo. give me a, I said, give me two weeks. I'll make some more. And one iPhone photo got you a solo it did. show. Yeah. Wow. That's well, pretty, it took a couple of years later before well, that happened. Well, it's a couple years in relationships and all yeah, going exactly. to openings and exactly. Showing that, up so. on time. Showing up <laughs> on time. Exactly. I will say this. He showed up on time for today's shoot. Yeah. He, he really, he he really did. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, hey, a little late, come on, where you been? So, uh, okay, so now this is probably the thing that you are kind of most famous for and yeah. certainly got the most press for. What are we looking at here? Now, these are photographs by Jim Payne, and I, he was uh, on the ramp next door to the sign, and he took several photographs, and what I did was I just put them all, did a paste up in oh, Photoshop. Oh, so this is all you. Right. They're all me in, okay. in, in time, but I just put them all together in one image to show basically what it took to put that sign up. And what exactly, why exactly did you choose to put that sign up? It was missing. It should have been there the whole time. So what did you call, what do you call it when you, when you do such a public service? I call it guerrilla public service. Guerrilla public service. To, it, to, to say it properly, it would be guerrilla. 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 Now, now did, you, did you uh, get in trouble for this artwork? I, no, I was, uh, uh, at one point in an interview with CNN, they had talked to Caltrans and they said, oh, this is very dangerous and et cetera, et cetera, but that was about it. So you, yeah, you got coverage, on, you were on CNN and yeah. you were on... You know, All the USA local Today news and, and national, it went national. National news, and, and you were a media celebrity. One of the reasons why it worked is because I realized once I put that thing up, it's gone. It's, it's public, pretty much public domain. So I videotaped everything and put together a 10 minute documentary. So when the story broke and they showed up at the studio, I gave them everything they needed. Ah, so you and were able, so it flew. It just took off. From you were there. able to facilitate the media you got by being prepared ahead yes, of time. Yes, exactly. Gosh, right. An artist prepared ahead of time, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Richard Ankrum, one of the only. Hey, so. so well, no, actually, I got a heads up. Gary Leonard was there with Amy Inouye and asked them to help document the last bit. I couldn't do, I couldn't. You couldn't be installing and photographing. Well, I blocked all the shots and said, just here, you're here, you're there, you're there, and then go. Right. We had walkie talkies and the whole thing started. Like Gary Leonard was there with, with Amy photographing on the 4th Street Bridge and he was gonna tell the downtown news the next day. Yeah, and what And happened? I said, no, let's wait. I wanna wait to make sure Caltrans knows they didn't do that. If it was off in any way, they'd come out there and take it down or fix ah, it or whatever. So it was you, the acid test of how good my work was. Did you it did fool. a perfect install. And it's, well, basically, good enough. I got the thing up, and nine months later, I had the video together. And at that, this was before YouTube. There was another video outlet thing, and I put it on there. And then uh, Paul Cullum from the LA Weekly found it, mm -hmm. and he wanted to break the story. And so Gary was there first. I kind of had to let Gary do it. Got to give people their their so, exclusive, definitely, yeah. That scoop, was on a scoop. Monday, and yeah. so on that on that Monday when the story came out, I sir, I got all the phone calls from all the press. I remember getting a phone call from from um, the Today Show, yeah, saying. We know you're friends with Richard Anchor. We yes. want to get him on the Today well, Show. Well, I sicked him. Yeah, well, I and sicked him on you. And they said, they said, they said. Um, they said, uh, where, what's his phone number? I said, I don't have his phone number. I, I, he's at the brewery, I'm at the brewery. I just walk over and knock on his door. <laughs> and you walk over and knock on his door and I stay on the phone and I had a landline at that. I didn't even have a cell phone at the time. Yeah. What year was this? This was in 2002 when the story broke. The story I, broke. Did, I actually did the project in 2001. Did you do it before 9-11? Yes, I did, just you, before 9-11. Do you think it would have been easier to do after 9-11? Well, when we flip to the other stuff, I can say absolutely not. Oh, Because let's... I started installing flags all over the state. Okay. Well, here's here is a close up of yeah. That's Gary Leonard who took that Gary picture. Gary Leonard's photo wow. of you installing the um, yeah. And is it still up, or did Caltrans put up their own version? They now? put up their own version eight years later. Wow. wow. Because that panel it's attached to was falling apart. It dates roughly from the fifties. 
Oh, and it was that's a, the only an way. old honeycomb with uh, aluminum laminate, and they start to disintegrate. So they had to replace the entire panel. Oh, and wow. that's the only reason it ever got done. That's how it got replaced. But wow. they did put up another five north. So, so they, which, yeah, which, which had never been there. Which all had the never time, been though. there. They'd done what they'd done instead was they put two small ones on posts off the side of the road. But I drove that route, and you'd never see them. I think it's important for you non-Angelinos to explain that for years you would be on the 110 North looking, looking for the 5 North and there was no sign, wait, yeah, there was no sign until Richard <laughs> came in and put what should have already been put, that if you get in this lane now, you're going to get to the 5 North. There was no sign until a quarter mile and you get all these traffic jams in a tunnel. Nobody in LA ever drives in a tunnel. So immediately, once you're in a tunnel, you panic. That's an LA driver. If they've never been, <laughs> if they've never been in that situation, they panic. And so for years, it was the panic tunnel. Richard <laughs> saved everybody stress. He added millions of years to lives just in less stress. Wow, that's some sugar coating. So, there. Uh, it's, it's a perfect example of art and utility. But but really, I mean, I looked at it as well, a piece hence of the act. name, Guerrilla Public. Yeah. Guerrilla Public Service, where you're actually helping. Art was helping. So much art is about. Ho oh, ho, we played a joke on you. It's like yeah. frat boy. I'm, you know, clever equals frat boy. That's not art, pal. We need something higher. Richard Ankrum, you seem to have had a higher calling with your art. Have you continued on such a way? Yes, as a matter of fact, I started doing the flags. Oh, and wait, we got neon. That? Wait, wait, we got neon. Oh, this here. is another, yeah, this is another body of work. This, this was... is another body. What's the, what, before we get to the flags, we've got your neon here. What exactly what are you making neon guns with? I was inspired from the riots in 93, as a, right after the riots, and remember that horrible image of Danny getting pulled out of that cement truck, getting beaten? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody ran out and bought a handgun the next oh, yeah. day and put yeah. it in their glove box. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, inspired by the gun sales after the riots, I decided to make my own. And these are sort of, they work more or less like tasers. It's a Jacob's Ladder at the tip and a neon just is in there for decoration to light up. But if you touch the end of it, you're going to get hurt or shocked or burned. In your case, with the pacemaker, it would probably kill you. The Zapparuni, baby. Wow. Did I say Zapparuni? Yeah. Or does, what? It, does, does, it, does that harpoon fire out? or does it, it just stays on the tip. It arcs. Ever see the science, the Frankenstein movies with oh, the right, wires yeah. and the electricity? It's called the Jacob's Ladder. It works similar. I just make a fancy blade for it. It's a but lot it of arcs. electricity. It arcs. And it's, it's low amp, so it won't just flat out kill you, but it'll cause involuntary muscle contractions. Battery it's operated. Like zap! Yeah, it'll zap you good. Right you, can light, you can set things on fire with it. Wow. And it's that enough. Okay, enough now you've got more weapons here. We have some axes. Uh, tell us about the axes. Ax hatchets? Yeah, they were hatchets. What, what is the difference between a hatchet and an axe? The size. Oh, the size. Yeah, really? the hatchets. A hatchet uh, and oh, axe. I didn't know. Yeah, that's wow. the size. Yeah, well, one's, one's for your hand. One is a handheld, you know, for like ca small camping. The other ones you use for... Never knew that. Trees cutting, and yeah, and logs arms. in half. I just that look kind at axes thing. like, oh, good, I got a good Scrabble word here. Bam. <laughs> so, so what exactly inspired you to do hatchets? It was from a show I did at the Brand Library. I had a the, bunch of these neon pieces and then some of the guns, and then there, I needed like a transitional piece. And I thought, well, I know, I'll use a hatchet. And a then hatchet. to offset the, offset the shape, so to speak, I made it very effeminate. Effeminate. So you got peeps there. Yes, well, in honor of today. Oh, yeah, today happens to be, we're, we're taping this show on Easter, Easter. Sunday. So there's Happy peeps. Easter. Yeah, and peeps are actually was one of the most popular uh, hatchets. Oh, really? Yeah, that was, yeah, Burt Green's got one. Oh, well, if Burt Green yeah. has one, everyone has Which one. Which he promptly broke. Oh! oh. <laughs> he had to fix it. it. He bro he, Jim Fittipaldi sold it to him, and he, and Jim told me, he was, he was so happy waving around, the thing flew out of his hand, broke against the wall. Oh, I, before no. he even got it home, he broke it. I had to, oh, yeah, he gave yeah. it to me, I had to fix it, give it back to him, Jeez, before man. he got it home. We got some glory days story yeah. here. So, ah, now these look like flags. Tell me about yes. the flag. Now that's, uh, you know, uh, well, but when we invaded Iraq, I could, just couldn't stop. So I thought, you know, the patriotism was going so well, I thought, well, if we're going to invade Iraq, why should we just take over the rest of the world? And so that represents... Those stars are from the CIA fact book. You can look this up online. That's where I got the source material. And those are every country in the world. Ah, so you're, oh, okay, so 
Im imperialism is a state. There, yeah. Every country in the world is our state now. The ultimate goal of imperialism. Oh, I'm o well, I was only one off, and I know that some states adjust. So to qualify that, you'd reunite Korea. Ah, and also okay. we have a new country, South Sudan. Let's well, see. Well, either we can keep that. See, that's how, there's a wiggle room for one country somewhere yeah. what, in there. What exactly are these cheerleaders cheering? Well, again, during the Bush era, uh, it's mandatory that you have for your employees a min federal minimum wage. And every other administration up until Bush's, it was a free PDF download. Okay. Under Bush's regime, you had to pay for it. And so I thought, I'll, give, I'll make it available for free. Oh. And not only did I do that, I added the other things they left off on two others. What's the pay scale in American Samoa, one of our territories, getting back to our flag right. again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the hamburger bill, which was one of the reasons why that you could, uh, kids going to school don't get paid minimum wage, they get paid less than that. And really? that was lobbied for by McDonald's and other hamburger consortiums. Wow. And, and I remember here. hearing from a senator not too long ago about the argument about minimum wage. He says, oh no, well what about the kids coming in, blah, blah, they should have a low, and well that's already in place. The guy's just lying basically because wow. he doesn't even know what the rules are. What is the act called that, that says that kids going to school can be paid less? It said that the, the nickname for it was the uh, hamburger bill. Mm -hmm. oh, the because the lobbyists said, okay, if you're under 20, you still go to high school, uh, you can only work so many hours, but you, and you, uh, like, like four hours after school, but you get a major pay cut in the process, of course. Disgusting. Wow. So Dis part of that one disgusting. senator's argument of, oh, well, we need these, in well, that's just bullshit, yep. quite frankly. So what are we looking at here? It's a painting, an oil painting of the L.A. River. You That's did a beautiful, beautiful landscape and yes. added some graffiti. Well, not just any graffiti. You can't see it very well, but they're all famous artists who have They're all what? They're all famous. Oh, so, those, so this yeah, is kind of like There's bit. Basquiat in there, Lynn Folks, and oh, okay, they've tagged okay, so the you, L.A. Yeah. River in you there. Threw, okay, okay, so you got some... So, yeah, so, there you uh, go. How, how old is this series of paintings? Uh, I started that in 2007. Wow. And where did you show these? Uh, I showed that District Gallery. District Gallery? Yeah. How's working with the District Gallery folks? It was okay. It, yeah. it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> 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 okay, I, wow. We got yeah. some pretty, is this a pretty flower? Yeah, what these were the neon pieces that got me, because between those and the guns, I yeah. came up with the hatchets. You came so up with you the sort of, so you can see now why. Oh, now we now you kind of oh, get the idea of where that, yeah, wow, exactly. Wow, wow, wow. So this is, this is also Because once I hung year. those on one wall and guns on the other, I'm like, I need a transitional piece. And uh, then the hatchets came about. And that was at the Brown Library. Yeah, it was a, in, I forgot what year. Yeah, it's 99, no, somewhere 90, around there. 99? Something like that's that. I forgot last, what year that was. last century. Previous century, yeah, oh, yeah. Here, pal. So, oh, now, 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 we're, we're, now, now here we are. Now, what happened is uh, we invaded Iraq, so I decided that w uh, I should make a flag. And, and there it looks like the American flag, but there's extra stars at the end of each row, right. so nobody could see it, because no one's going to count all the stars. Those extra nine stars were Iraq, Afghanistan, Israel, Nicaragua, and then our five other countries, including American Samoa, where the federal minimum wage poster is part of. Okay. So I'm in, trying to include all the politics right. and how the general uh, government works uh, and what they lie about, what they talk about. So anyway, I made these flags with extra stars, installed them in the historical Mexican-American War, Manifest Destiny, Mm -hmm. The flags represent, my flags represent Manifest Destiny number three, since we're going to invade everyone else. And so, to help that along, I decided to install the flags on all the monument and everywhere there was a war. Well, that's Monterey Bay, and that's the Customs House, that's his, California Historical Landmark number one. Wait, you just showed up and just put up I the flag? I dressed up like an employee. I got at this, in Monterey, I got there at 6 a.m., and just ran the flag up the pole and left and came back. Took The wind wasn't blown and, and came back a few hours later when the wind was right and the sun was out. Now, how long did your flag last? It, I'm not sure. I videotaped some of them that I could hang out and sit with because I did Fort Sutter and that one I actually had to hang out and wait like four or five hours in a van. We were sitting right there, ran the flag up, then we just had to sit and wait for, now, now, for them uh, to come out. 
But some last would, some would last two or three weeks, some would last a few hours, some I don't know what happened to. Did you get busted? No. Nobody ever caught you? No. Nobody cares? No. Nobody really cares about I did. I did one in Vernon in front of the police. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's a police state. Wow. And they didn't, nobody stopped you? No, because once they saw me, because I basically did an installation. I built the, the base and the pole with the flag. And once they saw me unfurl the flag, they just, oh, he's putting up a flag. Didn't wow. give a fuck. And I had like a uniform thing on, a fake uh, uniform. Like an, like an orange jumpsuit type? No, no, I had a, like a, kind of like, you know, if you really look at the workers for the cities, they, you know, you can be kind of hippie looking. It's but a uniform have, have without a, a uniform. Yeah, it's a blue shirt with the, and, and I made some fake patches that didn't really say it was, you know, it was the city. I could it wasn't forgery. It was just a fake looking symbol seal and a fake tags and the keychain and, Workers. Had the look. Yeah. yeah, I had the whole look. It was and just a big fake out. What are the stamps that are running alongside the... Tour? Well, be, those, those were, uh, at the time, uh, stamp.com or whatever they were. You can put up images and make stamps. So ah. I decided I made a stamp for each installation of the flags. Ah, so that so, was your, your edition was printed by stamps.com. Yes. Wow. And so I would just sell the sheet. You know, just by, I'm not going to sell you the individual stamp. Now, just buy yeah, the sheet. What's the market for the, now these flags, a lot of them, you're just, you're, you, you basically gave them away, right? Yeah, like the freeway sign, they're just. Now, now, they could have taken that down and, like, put it on somebody's casket, you know? They, like, may, they, they may very well have, because I seriously doubt anybody counted the stars. The first one I put up was at, uh, with the signing of the peace treaty at, uh, what is it, Lankersham, right next to Universal Studios. Uh, there's also a metro stop there, Campo de Cuenga. Yeah. And that was on Flag Day, oh, and I man. put that up. Now, I don't know how long that was there. You were born on Flag Day? I was born on Flag Day. Wow. It was July, June, June 15th, 14th. June 14th. Fly well, happy, flag. well, now there's a new reason to celebrate Flag Day. Exactly. So <laughs> where did you get these flags manufactured? I made them. Oh, so you cut this, you Betsy Rossed it out yourself? I basically uh, spray painted them and then sewed the hem. Oh. I stretched them on a, a, some what one by threes wow i bought the fabric and just oh, made sure everything was a little bit larger so i could cut it down and i, I masked it and i you can mask one side and then flip it over and mask the other side it's because the fabric's pretty thin or it won't fly ah. so and you can see through it and so i made a pattern laid it down taped it all off i could even start recycling the tape I'd pull it off and tape it on the wall and then oh, spray wow. both it's sides. Same and, image. Yeah, and then you just make sure it lines up on both sides. And, just, and I used a, 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 a plastisol, their t-shirt paint, you know, the right, right stuff that fits, you know, now, that goes for fabric. Does it say made in the USA? No, I saw, no, but I did on my website put fake flag manufacturers of America. Fake flag. fake flag because they have a well there is a flag manufacturers of california but so i did so a little roman numeral on where it went yours is the into fake the flag. yes i'm part of the fake flag association so uh what's what's next for you what are you working on now if i tell you they'll be looking for me oh so, so we have to have you back when it's in. when i put it up I'll, but there's yes there's not it'll be in public is the idea it's in a spot no one's hit before and it'll be in plain sight. And it may or may not have anything to do, well, it's got to do with history. History, politics. Of the Los Angeles area. So I can go around the city and basically put up, oh, this, is, this happened here, then, and this is what it was. Oh, wow. Enjoy. Well, that's, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. about all I can say. That's about all I, you can say. Yeah. So, so now you're, you're, uh, you're working with uh, the Charlie James Gallery in, in Los Angeles? Yeah, he's your next door neighbor. He's my next door neighbor, pretty good guy. Is he good to work with? Yeah, Charlie's golden. Yeah. He's great. Charlie's golden. He is golden. That sounds like Charlie's a screenplay. Great. We should be talking about some like gangster. <laughs> Charlie's golden. Yeah, Charlie's golden. You know, he's in Chinatown. He's golden. You can't touch him. Yeah. But I can say this. Don't be late. Uh-oh. Don't yeah. be late. Uh-oh. Don't waste his time. He doesn't like that. And of course, uh, I, nobody does. So Nobody does. Nobody don't, does. Don't be no. late. All my experiences with Charlie have been great, except for the fact yeah. that he's a New York Yankees fan, but we forgive him. <laughs> Oh, you know, well, we yeah. all have our transgressions. You know, well, his, is, his is minor, yet major. Uh, <laughs> so, well, uh, Richard Ankrum, I call you Rick. Yeah, you can, yeah. I call Charles Swenson Chuck. Yeah. I call Rochelle Botello Rochelle, though. No fucking around. But I have a joke about that. You can call me 
Rick, but I'm not a dick and I'm not rich, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us yes. on Modern Thank Art Bits. Thank you. It was Thank a blast. You. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. So, um, well, this is going to wind up yet another episode of the oop, let me get this camera this is going to wind up yeah this was a good episode this was we learned Should about we all look um, at the camera at the same time we learned about um synthetic colors being substitutes for the intensity of nature in formalism we learned about visual the, the viewers right and responsibility to bring their own vision their, their to own the thing. table. You lose context once you let it out of the studio. Exactly. We learned that you can get away with murder before 9-11. <laughs> and you should always be on time. And don't draw Donald Penis as Trump. <laughs> Trump's penis. <laughs> Try I swear, rip it. I could yeah. not have done that intentionally. Yeah. I could not have done that intentionally <laughs> if I tried. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pat myself Donald on penis. the back for that Donald one. Penis. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and poor Modigliani. Yeah. Although he got to see the girls Ooh, in person. Uh, so um, it was a great episode of Modern Art Blitz. We do this every Sunday live at 5 p.m. streaming at dromebox.com. We're archived at youtube.com. It's a website on that internet that your kids know about. Watch <laughs> us at your leisure. We've done 15 episodes now and we're only getting better. Until next Sunday, for my co-host Lisa Derrick, my guests Rochelle Botello and Richard Ankrum, I don't have a tagline. Good night! <laughs> I see your mind's full of